Mm -hmm. Okay, listen. Like, it's not my company. It's not my money. I'm talking about AEW here. But I got some questions. Okay? All right. So here's a lineup for Dynamite coming up on Wednesday. We have a Like a Dragon Street Fight. Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho, Kota Bushi, and Paul White versus Brian Cage, Powerhouse Hobbs, Kyle Fletcher, and Takeshita. This is a video game tie-in. We have John Moxley and Wheeler Yuta versus Orange Cassidy and Hook. And we will hear from MJF. That's the lineup for the show thus far, okay? Knows anything? Yeah. What's that? Well, considering the location they're going to be in, sounds like a lack of young bucks to me. This show is in Ontario, California. This show is 15 minutes from Rancho Cucamonga, or whatever the name of this place is that the Young Bucks are from. It's a real place. This is this is their hometown, everybody. And they are not listed for the show. They are not advertised for the show. I don't even know if they're on the show. I have no earthly idea, okay? But here are some facts that I do know. The last time that AEW went to Ontario, California, this same town, they drew, according to WrestleTix here, 7,540 fans, okay? 7,540. Now, the last time they were in Ontario, California... It was not Dynamite. It was Rampage. They ran a Rampage in the Young Bucks hometown. The main event of the show was the Young Bucks versus Pentagon and Phoenix. It was advertised well in advance, and they sold 7,540 tickets. Okay? Well, here we are. We have a dynamite in the Young Bucks hometown. They have not advertised anything involving the Young Bucks for this show. Like I said, I don't even know if they're on the show. As a viewer, I am presuming as of today that they're not on the show. I don't think they've done any media. The show is currently at 3,300 tickets. 3,300. 300 tickets. Why are the Young Bucks not advertised for this show? Why are the Young Bucks not doing media for this show? Why do the Young Bucks not have a match of any sort for this show in their hometown? What is going on? Can't call it. Can't call it. Where where are with the Young Bucks? Where are the luchadors? Where are some of the big names that you could Maybe put in there as well, too. And I know those are two separate issues, but actually it's the same issue because you're trying to sell tickets and you've only sold 3300 3, for a national TV show, your number one TV show. That's uh, It's not like they travel to that area a lot and have worn it out or anything like that. They're just cold. And when you're cold, you probably need the highest paid tag team of all time who are also part owners and have a stake in the company, you may need to trot them out there and give them some direction and tell them, promote the hell out of this show, use every resource you have to make us feel like a big item and a hot ticket in a big city with a lot of options. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't know why they're not throwing everything at the wall here, but that's not anything new either, is it? No, actually, sometimes they throw a ton at the wall. Sometimes that's the problem. No. I mean, they do have a... You have Kenny Omega, Jericho, Kotobushi, and Paul White versus Cage, Hobbs, Fletcher, and Takeshita. Like, that's, those are all... It's a pretty big-name big. match, but yeah, yeah. 3,300. Well, and you just announced MJF's going to have a segment on the show. You probably should have announced that the World Heavyweight Champion is going to be there the whole time, and he is the number one guy in your promotion. Like... He's going to be there every Dynamite. I know people may take that for granted, but really right now, maybe you ought to beat the hell out of that every chance you get and make sure everybody knows 
MJF is going to be here. Don't worry. MJF is going to be here. It also brings us to the collision rating for Saturday, which was uh, up 8%. That's that's good, at least, the viewership. And uh, the demo was up 22%, which is, I mean, being up is good. But keep in mind, last week was Crown Jewel. And anytime there's a WWE show, they they always do a bad number. But even with everything being up, they did 396,000 viewers with no WWE competition and a .11, fifth lowest viewership to date, fourth lowest 18 to 49 of the 22 episodes that uh, that have aired so far. Granted, it was a, a taped show, but I mean, as we've seen countless yeah. times, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter for WWE. It doesn't matter for AEW. I know that some of you on the chat will say, well, it does matter. You don't count. You're one person, okay? The reality is it doesn't make any difference whatsoever whether the show is live or taped. And in fact, often these shows do better when they are taped for whatever reason. Rampage did 322,000 and a point one two. So yes, Rampage beat Collision this week in the uh, 18 to 49 and uh, SmackDown on Friday did 2.2 million viewers number one on all of the network television with a 0. 0.57 at 18 to 49 so those are the uh, those are the numbers from this past weekend I can go back over here and turn the uh, the cold light on again you know when you're talking about this sort of stuff you're now not only are you cold, it's feeling like a, a DVR show. And you know what happens when it feels like a DVR show. And they are putting some good things on there. They're putting some things on Collision I like. I'm not trying to bag on the show or anything like that. But I think in general now, you're at Rampage ratings. And you could blame football. You could blame the NBA. You can blame those things. But the fact of the matter is you're just cold. And the ticket sales show it. The reaction to things shows it. And this number shows it. And, you know, I, I just it's just going to get worse from here on out. You know, what, two weeks from now we're going to have Survivor Series going head up against it? I'm sure this next week will be good because it's going to be the lead into the pay-per-view. So they're going to have some relief there, I, I think, on the show. But... Again, I don't think anything is going to raise that show other than getting hot. You know, I uh, see a lot of uh, commentary here in the uh, YouTube chat and the uh, Twitch chat. And uh, I see, as usual, some people who uh, are just like, eh, why are we talking about this? doesn't matter. It's fine. And they're the, you know, the hardest of the hardcore AEW fans. And... I've seen this a million times over my long, illustrious career. Mm -hmm. The last thing that AEW needs right now is for people to say that everything is all right. Yeah. That is the last thing that they need right now. The last thing they need is for people to say that the collision ratings are fine. The last thing they need right now is for people to say it doesn't matter if the Young Bucks are on the show in their hometown and it's doing 3,300 as compared to 7,800 last time. That's the last thing that AEW needs. If you're a fan of AEW, if you love AEW, you should, in fact, be critical of the problems. Because it would be nice if the problems went away and things improved. So it happens every time. Oh, it's fine. Everything is fine. You're being too negative. Well, that's not what's going to help when there is a problem, is Just to say because, that everything is fine. Yeah, the sky is not falling doesn't mean that everything is perfect. You know, again, small little cracks lead to worse things later on. And when those cracks are in your foundation, and they're, it's just going to get worse. And I, look... Tony Khan does a lot. I've asked since day one. I asked Dave on this show. I've asked you. I've asked it, you know, just throwing it up there in the air. What happens? Who is there to tell Tony Khan, okay, look, you got to make a change here, you know? And I don't know what their inner workings and every booking decision and all that sort of stuff. I don't know how the tentacles run throughout that entire organization, but 
you know, Bill Watts at one point had to bring in Jerry Jarrett and go, I need a new set of eyeballs here. And then that led to Bill Dundee coming in, shaking things up in business. And I've always wondered, with Tony Khan, with all this stuff on him, with all the stuff he has with Fulham, with all the stuff he has with the Jaguars, you know, how this, I'm booking ROH, I make all of this, how can you keep up with this? How can you keep it together? How can you be functioning, you know, functioning optimally if you're under that kind of stress? And... I don't know. I don't know if one thing's got to do with the other or not. The one thing I do know is things are not humming there, and they have not been for a, quite some time. And the whole Wembley show was a nice little, you know, salve on the wound for a little bit because you did draw 80,000 people, and nobody says they're going out of business. Nobody says they're going to lose their TV deal. But I can tell you, obviously, the numbers show it. The interest shows it. A lot of people just... We'll find something else to do with their time. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.